All right, you guys, today we're going to talk about 10.1, which is the early ideas of evolution. Evolution meaning change over time. How did all of life start as this single microscopic organism and evolve all the way into complex humans? Now, each and every one of you is going to have your own belief during chapter 10, but what we're going to present to you is all of the scientific points of view of science and evolution. So, to begin, we're going to start at the very beginning. What is simple evolution? And simple evolution is just change over time. It's saying that in some set amount of time, organisms will change. Okay, is every single species going to have the same time period for change? No, absolutely not. In the amount of time that you are watching this presentation, organisms such as bacteria, um, insects, maybe some types of plants, they will all evolve in probably 10 minutes. Other species, mammals, humans especially, they're going to take a long time to change. So every single species has a different set period for change over time. Species, a basic definition, we've talked about species probably throughout the year, it's just, it's a group of organisms that can reproduce and more importantly reproduce and have fertile offspring. So it's not that you can reproduce and have offspring, but it's that your offspring can have offspring. That's going to play a key role as we look into evolution and how we look at the different theories that kind of patch this together. So if we think of evolution, let's just think of some things that have changed over time. Let's take the phone. Back in the day, you had a phone, and the only type of phone you could have is the phone that was on the wall. You had to pick it up off of the phone. All right. Now let's look at the very first car phone. Very first car phone, it was probably this big. It fit in a bag, but it could go in your car. You had to plug it in and you could use it. All right, well, that wasn't very efficient. Now let's look at the first cell phones. The first cell phones were like this big, which was big for the first cell phone. Then all of a sudden, cell phones got really, really small, and now they're back to big again. Cell phones couldn't use the Internet in the first place. Now cell phones can. So cell phones is a good example of changing over time. But these ideas had to come from somewhere. So we're going to focus in on four different scientists that were kind of the early pioneers of evolution. The first scientist to talk about is Linnaeus. And Linnaeus came up with a classification system that basically organized all species all over the earth. He started off with kingdom and it worked all the way down to species. So kingdom being the largest. So we are all a part of the animal kingdom. And then each category underneath it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to the very specific species, Homo sapiens. That's our specific species name. So that's what Linnaeus came up with. He came up with the classification system of organisms. Building off of that, we have Buffon. Buffon said, his idea is basically the family tree, that everything started at the bottom and then we kind of shared it from there. So he's basically saying that we are all connected in one form or another. We all started off at the bottom. Well, E. Darwin, who happens to be Charles Darwin's grandfather, also agreed with that idea, except he took it one step further. He says, I agree that we're all starting at the bottom, and I agree that we're sharing these common ancestors as we go, but the bottom of our food chain, the bottom of our tree of life, these are less complex organisms. And as you move up the tree, these are more complex. Basically, these two scientists are showing how one simplistic form of life could lead to a species like Homo sapiens, like us. Now, a scientist that was kind of off on his own was Lamarck. And Lamarck said, if you don't use it, you are going to lose it. So, let's take your appendix. Your appendix is something that you just don't eat. In Lamarck's theory, you would eventually see humans that do not have the appendix. Not that we've had it surgically taken out, but that we do not have it. We are born without an appendix. Because we do not use it, we will lose it. 
This is kind of where Lamarck was a little wrong. He had the theory of acquired traits. And he was, it has two parts. The don't use it, lose it. But then it also has if you need it, you will get it. So take the giraffe. The giraffe needed a long neck, therefore it got it. Not that it changed over time to get it, but that it needed a long neck, so it grew a long neck. Okay. Acquired traits would also be, let's say I got rid of my left hand, so now I don't have a left hand. In his theory, now my children would not have their left hand, because that's an acquired characteristic, so that would just be something that is passed on. That's wrong. We know that the only thing you can pass on from generation to generation are genetic traits. So Lamarck's theories were wrong. But the other three scientists were right, and they were on to something. And anytime you lead with something in science, you kind of have to say, well, what comes next? Or what about the step before that? So as scientists were saying, we started at the bottom, and we started with this least complex idea of life, and it's grown to this complex form of life. How did all of this change come about? What about the earth? Did the earth change? Was the earth always the same? So now scientists started exploring how did the earth change over time, or how did the earth evolve? So Cuvier studied the earth's formations, and what he came up with was he came up with the theory of catastrophism. And in catastrophism, he said, the earth has changed over time because of things such as natural disasters, volcanoes, earthquakes, tornadoes. These situations, tsunamis, have all changed our landforms. Not only has it changed our landforms, it's also caused different species to go extinct. Now, catastrophism really does shape the earth. It really does cause the land to change over time. And it really does cause species to go extinct. So Cuvier was right. He was on to something. But Cuvier didn't have the whole picture. Because the whole entire world doesn't change just because of natural disasters and catastrophes. So we have to look at the next theory. And the next theory looks at gradualism. Gradualism says the earth does change, so they agree, the earth is changing, but now we're saying it changes over long periods of time very, very slowly. Okay, this is also true. So if you look at something like the Grand Canyon, it was all shaped out and molded because of glaciers, running water, rivers, erosion. That shapes our land. Does that happen quickly? Absolutely not. It takes a long period of time for that to happen. So now two scientists were correct. Cuvier was right in saying that natural disasters do shape the land. Hutton is correct in saying that these changes are slow and they take place over long periods of time. But we have to take that one step further. We have to build it into the final theory of how the Earth was formed. And that comes down to Lyell. And what Lyell said is, I agree that catastrophes change the Earth. I agree that they're slow and they take time. But now I'm going to say that they're uniformed. So uniformitarianism basically says that the same changes do take place over long periods of time, but they will continue to repeat themselves. So look at the layers of rock. If you notice, uniform layering still occurs. So you'll notice the same pattern in each of those rock layers. This is the winning theory of geologic change. Not only is change slow and over long periods of time, but it is uniformed and it does continue to repeat itself. Okay, truthfully, that is section one. Section one doesn't have a lot to it. It just introduces the theories of geologic change and it introduces the scientists that gave way to Charles Darwin, who we'll talk about in um, section two and every section from here on out. Because Charles Darwin is that father figure of natural selection. He kind of ties the word evolution together. So the last thing I want us to go through and recap is just the power notes from 10.1. Okay. If we start all the way over in the corner and we start with Linnaeus, 
Linnaeus came up with the first part. He came up with the classification system. And I know a lot of you are thinking, but what do I need to know? You need to know each and every one of these scientists and how they contributed to the ideas of evolution. This was his contribution. It was the classification system. Okay, Buffon. Buffon was this theory that we all have common ancestry. And for Darwin, I like to put that this is E. Darwin, because next section we're going to talk about C. Darwin. But E. Darwin builds off of Buffon's idea, and he's saying that more complex organisms come from less complex organisms. Okay, and then we had talked about Lamarck, and Lamarck is that theory of acquired characteristics. Okay, let's look at the last three things. So there's the scientists, and eventually what we're going to have to build on is how did these scientists help Charles Darwin? Let's look at the theories of change. The first one is catastrophism, and that's just natural disasters shaped the earth. Gradualism, look at the root word, it's gradual. Well, what does gradual mean? Change is slow and takes a long time. And the last one, uniformitarianism, it's the same root thing. Look at the word uniform. Uniform means the same. So it's saying that change does occur. So gradualism occurs over time and is ongoing. I know section one doesn't have a lot to it. Section one is probably one of those sections that's more memorization than anything because you do need to know about these scientists and you do need to know about the theories of change. If you have any questions over 10.1, just come in and ask any one of the science teachers.